Over the last few days, we have really seen Trance and Tyrix ticker symbol TRXC absolutely take off in popularity. Within my channel, you guys absolutely love TRXC, uh, you know, content. You really love to see what all is going on with this company. You love hearing different opinions about it. I see y'all talking about it in the comment sections. It is genuinely growing. Well, an idea was proposed to me recently as a, one of my Patreon members did come to me and he said, Tyler, okay, listen. We know you love the company, but one thing that we have noticed is that you're bringing us all the reasons as to why this could be a good investment or why they could be good going into the future. But what are some reasons that maybe people won't want to invest in this company before, you know, f because of? Because realistically, think about it. Not everyone's going to like this company. There are going to be reasons in which people aren't going to want to invest in this company. And it could only enhance your understanding of the company to understand the other side. So what I wanted to do is go ahead and do some deep diving and see, okay, what are some risks associated? with this company what have they said that the risks associated with them are what are reasons in which people will not want to invest in this company because again I do think that it is only fair to you know bring to light the good and the bad about a company whenever you're in you know considering okay am I going to invest am I not going to invest should I maybe consider investing if they do this and so I think it's going to be only fair if I do bring you all what I think is going to be some of the risk factors associated with this company now if you do want to be a part of our community of over a hundred traders and investors I update them all on my portfolio I let them know all of my live trades I was up over I think like 60 to 70 percent on three different holdings in the last two or three days I did update them all about how my portfolio has been changing they put all of their profits and losses we learn we teach each other lessons it's really an amazing community of people i also post all of the content that is associated with these videos and my silver and up tiers so definitely consider going down to the link below and checking out the patreon i really do believe it could be a fantastic opportunity for anyone involved now with that being said let's go ahead and let's take a dive into this and let's see what are some of the risks that are associated with transenteric ticker symbol trxc now this article in which i will be talking about was actually released on january 14th it's going to be a form 424b5 it took me forever to find um but basically this is just an sec filing where they do address some of the risks associated with their company now if you do go down to this filing and you take a look right about here we can see that they have a, a little section called risk factors now this very very in-depth breaks down a lot of the risks associated with this company what i'm not going to do is i'm not going to go super duper into depth about each and every one but the ones that i do believe are very important and important Important to note I'm going to be going over so the first one is going to be that they have a history of operating losses they have a limited operating history they are not profitable and have incurred losses since their inception prior to quarterly reports that they filed in 2020 and the annual report filed for the year ended December 31st 2019 management concluded that the substantial doubt existed about our ability to continue as a going concern as a result of anticipated capital needs as well as past recurring losses and an accumulated deficit so this should this did it if if you are very doubtful about transenteries, this is a good reason to be. That is not a good sign. So there's two sides of this coin. It's coming down to this. Do you believe that their technology can really disrupt the overall market and have some positive effects in the future and be able to change and grow with a growing industry? I personally do. That is the reason I'm invested in this company. I believe that although capital is an issue, capital is a very large issue and they burn through a lot of it. I believe that the industry in which they are targeting is growing at very fast rates. And if they are able to continue doing what they're doing with CE mark approvals, FDA approvals, and doing all of these things, they could grab some of that market share as it does grow and grow their company with it and then be able to offset some of this lack of you know capital itself. So that is one thing to really, really consider when deciding if you're going to invest into this company. So going off of that, we can see here that they said that we will require substantial additional funding in the future, which may not be available to us on acceptable terms or at all. Now, we, it says that they do believe or anticipate that the net proceeds of prior equity financing or this offering will be sufficient to support development of our products and product candidates and provide us with the necessary resources to continue our market developmental efforts and commercialize its enhanced system and other products. They intend to advance additional products through clinical and preclinical development in the future. They believe that they will need to raise additional capital in order to continue their operations and achieve their business objectives. They have an effective shelf registration statement that was declared effective on the 10th of uh, february 10th 2020 that registers up to 150 million of their securities as of the date of this prospectus 63.75 million is available for future financings other than in this offering they cannot assure us that they will be successful in a 
obtaining such additional financing on terms acceptable to the company or at all. So I know that is a mouthful, but what that's basically saying is that what that you know what they've done in the past to raise capital, they don't believe it will be enough to fuel them going into the future. So they're going to need to raise capital in other ways to continue their expansion outward. The issue with that is, as they say here, they may not the, these different offers and different agreements may not be available to us on acceptable terms or at all. So they're not sure. Okay, am I going to be able to get these different offers and get the come to these agreements in which we will need to continue operations? That's a big risk. Now, this is going to be released, and the way that they release these is in a way that's saying like, okay, this is the worst case scenario. I do believe that as they are starting to get more approvals, especially with CE Mark approval, FDA approval, as they are starting to get a lot of these new products through their preclinical stages, that that is going to allow them to have an even better investor presentation to people like institutional investors and investors in general that will then provide them the funds to continue operations. So I do think that with the progress they are making, that it is very good and is very likely that we can continue continue to see them operating into the future. But at the end of the day, that's all personal speculation, and I am not a financial advisor nor is this financial advice. So if you are going to invest in this company, you definitely need to consider this as well. So this is a by far the biggest issue that I have with this company at the moment. It says that they are currently highly dependent on a single product, the Sinhan system. They cannot give any insurance that the Sinhan system can successfully be commercialized. Now it says that they are currently highly dependent on the Sinhan system, which is FDA cleared for sale in the US, CE marked for sale in the European Union and other countries, registered for sale in the Russian Federation, and approved for sale and reimbursement in Japan. So that is definitely good. I do believe that with all of these different approvals, it allows them to reach out to a vast consumer base. Now you guys know I'm very into consumer bases. If you don't have a big consumer base, I'm not investing into you because I just don't think you have potential. I'm very strict on that. But they, they're not sure, okay, are we going to be able to commercialize this? And if they're not, that's the death of the company. I, I really, I, like full blown, my honest opinion, that's the death of the company if they are not capable, you know, capable to sell these things, to commercialize them and get them to grow. Now, since they are in a growing industry, I believe that their technology with the AI and all of these different things are going to allow them to present them to these hospitals, present them to these surgeons, and I do think that we are going to see an uptake in the sales of their Sinhan system. Again, that's all speculation, because if not, we're talking about risks. If not, this company goes away. I, I honestly cannot imagine this company progressing forward without their Sinhan surgical system. Now, they did mention earlier that they were working up products through clinical stages in order to diversify their portfolio out a bit so they're not so reliant and dependent on this one product. I think that's very important going on into the future. And if they are not capable of bringing up these new products, then that is going to constrain their stock. It's going to constrain their overall company to this single, this single entity, this single item in which they're going to try to commercialize. And that limits its growth substantially. And the last one that I am going to go over is that the sales cycle for the Sinhan system has been lengthy and unpredictable. This leads them to refocus their energies on entering into placement and leasing arrangements with hospitals, which has had an impact on their revenue. Now, this is good and this is bad. Okay, this is good and this is bad. The reason that I believe that this is good and this is bad is there's two sides of the coin, of course. The good thing about this is the fact that whenever they do lease these out, that does provide them with consistent revenue that they will be receiving from the places in which are using their systems. The issue with that there is that if there's faults, if there's issues with their systems and they're not performing as they hopefully they like they, they thought they may, or if another system comes out that is overall better than the Sinhan system, we could then see these companies not even need their the, the, this, this uh, overall technology anymore. And what's that going to lead to? A decline in revenue now where that does become not such a bad thing is if you think about it in the sense that okay transenterics was selling these to hospitals well if it wasn't performing well the hospital just wouldn't buy another one when the first one went out true but realistically the amount that they would spend on that initial purchase of the first in-hand system would likely cost more than a month of leasing it whenever they start to realize that there's issues so there's good sides and there's bad to that that is definitely one of the one of the risks that are they have associated with it but i think they have come up with a good solution whenever it comes to you using leasing agreements. Definitely let me know your thoughts on what some more risk could be about Transenterix. I think this company has loads of potential, but there is risk. I always tell you guys these penny stocks are risky. So if you're going to invest in them, make sure you understand all of the risks that are associated with them. Again, let me know what you think about this company and overall the stock down in the comment section below. If you do want information about the trades that I make with this company and live updates on when I buy, when I sell, or when I plan on getting out, you can, you can find out all of this information down in 
in the link below it is going to link you to my patreon and that is where i am fully transparent about all of my trades i hope you guys did enjoy today's video if you did you can let me know by smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel if you are new with that being said i post two to three times every single day so i'll be seeing you all soon peace